relate to the development of our people, our continent, our land. This is where, my brother and my sister, we talk pertinence and not pettiness. We talk pertinent issues and not petty issues. I appreciate you and I thank you so much. Today, my brother and my sister, we have a few things to talk about. Let us start with this. Now, today, the NDC had its case to try and correct mistakes in its petition that has been sent to the Supreme Court. And even though the opposition said no, once you have brought it, leave it like that. And let us go on with the merit of what you have written. But the Supreme Court has decided to allow Mahama and his NDC to go home and correct those mistakes and return to the Supreme Court. My brother, my sister, another very beautiful thing that has happened in court today is the fact that the whole court proceedings would now be telecast live on TV so that you and I can sit back and watch and know exactly what is happening. Especially in this period of the COVID-19. We leave it there like that. My brother, my sister, democracy in Ghana must be upheld no matter what. Now we live in a country, my brother, my sister, we have said that time and again. Where it looks like we are living in the animal farm. George Orwell's animal farm. Some people have the right to do some things and go free. And others do those same things. And they are held by the law. Where is the country going to? When the so-called mentors, people who are supposed to mentor the youth, have thrown all caution to the dogs and themselves are behaving like dogs. In my days, you would see mentors all over the place, on TV, in the media, all over the place. Everyone growing in my era had at least five mentors. Today, it is very difficult in Ghana to find mentors. Because the people who are supposed to be mentoring us have become fools. The people who are supposed to be mentoring us have become animals. The people who are supposed to be mentoring us, my brother, my sister, have become dogs. Because they have thrown all caution to the dogs. And they have joined hands with the dogs. And they have all become dogs. My brother, my sister, it is a very, very, very bad precedence. It is a very, very terrible thing for the youth to grow in a country where there are no mentors. Think about it. It is very terrible, my brother, my sister, for the youth to grow in a country where there are no mentors. There's nobody you are looking up to. There is no hope as long as you have no mentor. But if you look at a mentor, you grow in the shoes of this mentor and you continue growing with the hope that one day you will become that mentor and even more. Those who try to be mentors end up in jail. And now, the only people who are becoming mentors are the thieves. They glorify riches no matter where the money is coming from. In the church, they become elders. The pastor has no sense to find out where this man is making his money from. As long as he's able to donate money to the church, he is the elder. He could be the biggest fool, but as long as he has the money, he is the church elder. The wisest man would sit in the corner close to the toilet in the church because he's poor. When we have a society like this, you would have the youth growing to become thieves. After all, thievery is glorified. My brother, my sister, when you watch TV, it's all about stealing and it's all about tricks. 
when you watch TV, it is herbalist. And when I talk about herbalist, all I'm trying to talk about is people who claim to heal you without using herbs. It's all about juju men and juju women making quick and fast money. And the nation has no sense to ban all these people. No sense, no common sense. People are sitting on TV telling you how you can turn one city into one million American dollars. Which of the youth will go to school for 10 years, 15 years in order to become who they are supposed to be? They will go and steal one city and give to this juju man so that they can get one million dollars. No common sense. They are still parading our TV and radio. Any channel you tune into, at least five juju men are there preaching how you'll be able to turn one city into one million American dollars. And the authorities are sitting there like fools, watching all these people on TV and radio. Sometimes we got to be hard on them because they don't think. In my days, I never saw a juju man on GTV. GTV, in fact, GBC TV was the only TV station we had in Ghana. There was no day we saw a juju man claiming that one city could become one million American dollars and therefore the youth should stop going to school. The youth should postpone hard work or better still throw away hard work and come and follow them so they can turn one city into one million dollars. My brother, my sister, if that is not worse, look at the lottery. Look at the gambling going on on our radio and TV. Every channel you tune to, there is a raffle going on. Somebody is ready to make some quick money. Somebody is ready to really get hard work to the background and turn his fortunes around by some miraculous raffle. There's a raffle. Buy one, get 20 free. Oh, pay this amount of cash. And then you enter into a raffle draw. And you'll win a car. Award systems all over the place. And all these award systems, you would have to pay and vote for your favorite to win. It is not about talent anymore. It is about money. All these things are gambling and tricks. Until the youth who are so crazy about awards. All these musicians, they want to be awarded. It doesn't matter where the award is coming from. So you see all these Sakawa award groups coming up with fake award systems and asking the youth to vote for their favorite. And you don't vote with empty hands. You pay to vote. If it's about talent, why are you talking about people paying to vote? All these things are happening in our country, my brother, my sister. And these things worry us seriously. We are turning this country gradually into a country of thieves. Into a country of lazy people. Why should I go to school when one city can become one million dollars? Why must I go to the farm when the chief farmer in the country only gets a lantern and a TV set at the end of the year as his award for hard work. Why must I go to school to become a doctor when the doctors are all becoming politicians and stealing from the coffers of the nation? Why must I be an honest person when even in church the pastor relegates me to the toilet area and brings the biggest thief right in front there as the church elder? And when it comes to prayer time, he would ask the thief to pray for me. All because I have no money. Think about it, Ghana. Be wise, Ghana. Or else, in no time, all these virtues are going to sink into a deep sinkhole. And at the end of it all, we as a country would be the loser. My brother, my sister, there is something I would like to discuss with you very quickly. And this is very important to me. 
I've been thinking about discussing this for some time now. Give me five minutes, I'll be done. I'm reading this from my joy online, and this was published on December 20, 2020. That's just last month. It says, U.S.-based Ghanaian surgeon pleads guilty to federal health care fraud. Again, U.S.-based Ghanaian surgeon pleads guilty to federal health care fraud. I read, listen. It says, U.S.-based Ghanaian cardiovascular surgeon, Dr. Moses DeGraff Johnson, who was earlier this year charged for participating in a federal health care fraud, has pleaded guilty. The 46-year-old admitted to 56 counts of health care fraud, conspiracy to commit fraud, and aggravated identity theft. Dr. DeGraff Johnson, the owner of Defunct Heart and Vascular Institute of North Florida, was in indicted on uh, February 4 for swindling the American government and health insurers of more than 26 million American dollars. The ca cardiovascular surgeon, amongst other things, was accused of performing unnecessary procedures on patients, billing healthcare companies millions for surgeries he never performed, and for poaching patients at local hospitals. <laughs> Dr. DeGraff Johnson, who is said to be a relative, listen, very important. Dr. DeGraff Johnson, who is said to be a relative to former vice president under Dr. Hila Liman, Dr. Joseph William Swain DeGraff Johnson. Dr. Joseph William Swain DeGraff Johnson. Then use the money he gained from the illegal act for a lavish lifestyle, including traveling across the world for pleasure. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, he used churches, nursing homes, and at least one hospital to find vulnerable victims, many of whom were subjected to invasive and unnecessary procedures. His crimes left some patients unsure about the veracity of their own medical records and what treatment they may usually need. Prosecutors also revealed that Dr. DeGraff Johnson deposited more than 32 million American dollars of healthcare funds into his own personal bank account between November 2015 and October 2019, but the majority of the money was transferred to other accounts. According to U.S.-based news portal, Tallahassee Democrat, DeGraff Johnson faces a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison on which, on each of the fraud and conspiracy counts, another maximum sentence of two years for the identity theft, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential fines. The report also indicated that he will be sentenced on April 18, 2021 at the U.S. courthouse in Tallahassee. This is very important. Now, I need you to listen to this. DeGraff Johnson was born in Ghana, but immigrated to America with his family as a child, settling in the Houston area. He had a storied medical career, including reportedly saving the life of rapper 50 Cent, who came into his Queen's Trauma Ward in 2000 with multiple gunshot wounds. Did you hear that? In recent years, he divided his time between Tallahassee, where he had a downtown condo, and New York City, where his wife and children resided. He joined Capital Regional Medical Center staff in 2014, working as an independent doctor until some time before his crimes came to light. He had numerous business ventures in the U.S. and Africa. Listen, including a hamburger restaurant, a nightclub, and a failed effort to build a hospital in Ghana. 
He has a hamburger restaurant, a nightclub, and a failed effort to build a hospital in Ghana. This is the last thing I'm going to read, and we'll deal with this. Listen, and this is important. He even aspired to run one day for president of Ghana. One of his family members served as vice president of the country in the early 1980s, and that was uh, uh, the Graf Johnson, vice president to Hillary Liman. I'll leave it here. You see? You see what we're just talking about? This is a medical doctor. His uncle was a vice president in the Republic of Ghana in the early 1980s. The vice president of Hila Liman. We all know the Graf Johnson. My brother, my sister, this guy now is a fraudulent doctor. A patient will come to him. You don't have this sickness. You don't have that. But because he will make money from that, he tells you he has it. You have it. And he does so many different things. It's like you sit in an Uber. And there's a short way to where you can reach your destination, but the Uber driver decides to drive on and on, round, round, circumambulating the whole place just to charge you more. That's what this doctor was doing. And he left a lot of his patients unsure of their medical status. He stole from so many different people using the churches and some other such organizations. And at a point, he transferred several millions of American dollars into his own account, flying around the world for fun and for pleasure. And then, my brother, my sister, this is the man who came to Ghana and established a hamburger company. He tried to open up a hospital, but it failed. My brother, my sister, he saved the life of rapper 50 Cent in 2000 when he came into his hospital with several, several gunshot wounds. A man like this should have been celebrated, but he's a common thief. The genes of stealing from Ghana inside him. This is the kind of generation you are building. This man is only 46 years. But he's become one of the biggest thieves in America now in the history of the medical whatever. And what he does is to poach patients from other hospitals. You speak with this hospital, small hospitals, oh, bring your patients, bring your patients, bring your patients. And he will poach them from these smaller hospitals because the more patients this guy has, the more money he would make by swindling them and swindling the American system. This is the history you are giving to people out there. My brother, my sister, the Graf Johnson now has accepted all his crimes and he will be sentenced on the 8th of April, 2021. The important thing I would like to share with you is this. His uncle was vice president to Hila Liman. It is still in his head that the easiest way to steal in Ghana is to become a politician. So he's making money out there, and it's mind that he will come to Ghana and run for president. After all, Ghanaians worship money without thinking about where the money is coming from. Stolen a lot of millions so cheaply, disgracing the country, disgracing his family, and disgracing almost everyone who is Ghanaian. And he's coming down to Ghana, my brother, my sister, to run for presidency. These are the presidents you have, thieves. So when they come into power, they will continue stealing. Steal the taxpayers' money, rig elections, continue to be there because they enjoy power. They grow old and they still want to continue being in power. And the youth continue to suffer. When the youth see them as mentors and they go to them for advice they find nothing empty people they are common thieves to god be the glory my brother my sister 
beware of these people and be careful because these are the people, my brother, my sister, who are destroying the name of this country. Stolen money can never make you rich. That is why all these politicians, a lot of them never die a peaceful death. They die from a terrible stroke. Some of them, when they get out of power, they are like church mice. You see them walking around with stroke reading, written all over them. A lot of these politicians are nothing but thieves. You see them today in power, throwing about their weight. As if they were teen gods. The moment they get out of power, look at them again. In fact, they are almost worse than beggars. All the stolen money is gone. After all, they never worked hard for the money. All the investments they make fail because they are not even investors. They are thieves. So why they can continue being in power and how they can be in power would be eminent to everybody. To God be the glory. We leave it here. We're going to follow some of these issues very carefully and then uh, we'll bring this to you. This is an opinionated segment. These are my opinions and I need you to come along and reason with me. In another development, we, we hear Bulldog has been released. Yes, he's been released. He's, he's, he's had a bail and it's out there. We shall follow all those events very carefully. And we are still waiting for the East Legon police to tell us, update us on the assailant who came here looking for my life. We are still waiting to hear from East Legon police. It's been nine days since the thing has happened. Since the thing happened and we have not had a single word of update. We pray that we will soon hear something. I appreciate you and I thank you so much for coming and I bless you. I got have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. And this one goes to all ghetto youth.